Emotional intelligence. You may have heard the term before, but many people still don't understand what it means. Yes, we all wear masks of one another. Sometimes it's a stormtrooper's mask. Sometimes. Uh, there is a reason for this problem. 95% <laughs> of the people think they're emotionally intelligent, but only 15 actually are. That's interesting. And here to help us understand all of it is motivational speaker Rich Bracken. Um, all right, so let's just all kidding aside, what is emotional intelligence? Sure. Emotional intelligence is that theory of understanding and recognizing and managing your own emotions, but also managing the emotions of others and interacting with others. And it really breaks down to four core components. So on the self side, there's self-awareness, which is what are your emotions? What are you feeling? And then there's self-management. What are you doing with those emotions? So you can still get mad. You can still get upset. But it's what are you doing with those when you want to act them out? Yeah. But then on the social side of things, it's social awareness. So how are you feeling? How am I interacting with you? And then what is our relationships or relationship management? So it's really just interacting with others, but also managing how you act and react. Hmm. How does uh, emotional intelligence differ than regular intelligence? So your IQ, right? So uh, studies show that your IQ actually peaks out at 20, which for some people that is a horrible, horribly terrifying thing. Uh, uh, yeah. So but the nice thing about emotional intelligence is that you can actually raise it, unlike your IQ. Oh, so that. through different activities, different reactions, changing how you react to things, managing your emotions better, and then interacting with people better, you actually raise your emotional intelligence. So think about it on a scale from 1 to 100. And if you're low, if you're like a 40 or a 50, you can work on things to increase your emotional intelligence. Unfortunately for your IQ, that peaks out. So you can't change that after a certain amount of time. Interesting. Yeah, yeah I, this is fascinating to me, Rich. I, I used to work with a woman who always used to say, like, everyone's responsible for the energy they bring into a room. Um, mm -hmm. That, you, you know, people, so, like, you can walk in and just have terrible vibes because mm -hmm. you're not having a great day. Right. But not being emotionally intelligent, I would gather, I would guess, would mean somebody who can't check themselves. That sure. are like, oh, wow, I'm putting everybody off. Or if you think about the people that are really, really smart, but don't have really good, they're, they're either right. hotheads or they're, they're not very socially interactive or they don't pay attention to other people, that is detrimental to their, their behavior, their performance, and their happiness. Yeah. And uh, that would be, I can see this discussion here about the benefits of emotional intelligence. If, you've, if you're around somebody who is, who is a hothead and who's going off, those, those kind of, that kind of negative energies would repel a lot of people and you wouldn't, they wouldn't want to be around that type of person, right? That's right. What talking about? And that's the kind of person you don't want to move in yeah. with before you get married, yeah. right? So yeah. yes. it's managing yes. those emotions. Yeah, and so not only raising your emotional intelligence will help you be happier and draw, draw your stress back, you actually engage with people better. So think about like get engaged engaging other people and getting to know them a little bit better. You're checking your own emotions in that, in that instance and you're learning more about them. It expands your horizons. Not that you have to agree with those individuals, but it allows you to have those conversations because now in society, we're so quick to say, you know, I don't agree with you, so you're wrong. Right. Instead of asking further questions and developing a relationship, you're stopping short of what the potential has. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, as I say, you've been giving a lot of examples about how we can increase our yeah. emotional intelligence. What are, I think it's probably worth going over again. What, what, how can we yeah, increase sure. that? Sure. How do we do this? So, yeah. uh, well, let's break down the four. Let me, let me show you the ways of the force with emotional intelligence, right? <laughs> okay. So with self-awareness, it's really understanding your emotions. So throughout the day, as emotions come up, put names to them, put titles to them. We often tend to go to uh, sad, angry, happy. But expand your, your emotional thesaurus. I'm anxious, I'm scared. You know, what are those emotions that you're truly feeling? So write those things down as you come across them. With self-management, take a journal. Every time you have something happen that you go positive or negative with your reaction, write down what happened, why it changed, and what you could do differently next time. Mm. With social awareness, you know, the one thing that we do all the time is that we're always walking around with our phones in our hands. So uh, if somebody comes up to talk with you, put your phone away. Yeah. Just uh, engaging in that active listening piece because the minute your phone lights up, what are you doing? You're looking down at your phone, you're not paying attention to the person, so you're not engaging with them. You know, and, my yeah. kids called me out. Uh, they said to my wife, like, Dad's always on his phone. Like, we try to talk to him, he's always texting or do it. I yeah. broke my heart. Right. Right, yeah. and, and, and leave it to kids are very emotionally intelligent too, so leave it to kids to check us on that. I've had my sons do the same thing to me, and it makes me aware that I'm doing it. Sometimes we get in that habit and we're not paying attention. So again, but it's also the relationship management. Can you tell me more about what, how this impacts you? So when you ask your children, like, what, you know, what about this upsets you? Well, it's because you're not paying attention to me. But it's asking that question and not just assuming the intent or assuming why they're asking, it, that develops the relationship even further. That's great stuff, mm -hmm. man. Where uh, can people get a hold of you, Rich? So they can find everything on richbracken.com, all kinds of videos, blogs, podcasts, all kinds of stuff. And 
Stormtrooper helmets as well. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've seen Rich on uh, Zoom, you have seen that helmet right there on his shelf in the background. Yes. That is, that is the Disco Stormtrooper, one of 17 in the world, custom designed, but it is the week of May the 4th, so I had to bring it in today because <laughs> you and I are both such Star Wars fans. So there it is, the Disco Stormtrooper helmet. I love it. Rich, great to see you. Good to see you guys. Thank, Thank you. you.